Hello, everyone. I am academic persona non grata because of my unacceptable philosophical positions. And this isn't just some inconvenience. These facts rendered my job morally untenable. How can I accept prospective researchers and train them in good conscience, knowing their employment prospects to be minimal? D.I.E. Diversity, inclusivity, and equity mandates must die. Must die. You've all had your ideas. They have all failed. I am king. Not you! Not you! Not you! Me! We are now at the point where race, ethnicity, gender, or sexual preference is first accepted as the fundamental characteristic defining each person, just as the radical leftists were hoping, and second, is now treated as the most important qualification for study, research, and employment. This is one of many idiot issues of appalling ideology currently demolishing the universities and downstream the general culture. This means we're out to produce a generation of researchers utterly unqualified for the job. And we've seen what that means already in the horrible grievance studies disciplines. That, combined with the death of objective testing, has compromised the university so badly that it can hardly be overstated. And what happens in the universities eventually colors everything as we have discovered. Just exactly what am I supposed to do when I meet a grad student or young professor hired on die grounds? Manifest instant skepticism regarding their professional ability? What a slap in the face to a truly meritorious outsider. And perhaps that's the point. And perhaps that's the point. The die, die ideology is not friend to peace and tolerance. It is absolutely and completely the enemy of competence and justice. D-I-E, diversity, inclusivity, and equity mandates must die. Need I point out that this is insane? Can't you see that the ideologues who push such appalling nonsense are driven by an agenda that is not only absolutely antithetical to your free market enterprise as such, but precisely targeted at the freedoms that made your success possible? Can't you see that by going along sheep-like, just as the professors are doing, just as the artists and writers are doing, that you are generating a veritable fifth column within your businesses? Need I point out that this is insane? Even the benighted New York Times has its doubts. Are workplace diversity programs doing more harm than good? In a word, yes. What in the world is wrong with you? Are you really so blind, cowed, and cowardly with all your so-called privilege? Diversity, inclusivity, and equity, that radical leftist trinity, is destroying us. Wondering about the divisiveness that is currently besetting us? Look no farther, farther than die. Look no farther than die. Wondering more specifically about the attractiveness of Trump, Trump, of Trump? No further than die. Diversity, inclusivity, and equity mandate. Look no further than die. Look no further than die. Need I point out that this is insane? When does the left go too far? when they worship at the altar of die and insist that the rest of us who mostly want to be left alone do so as well. When does the left go too far, too far? Enough, enough. Finally, do you know that Vladimir Putin himself is capitalizing on this woke madness? Anna Majar Barducci at memri.org covered his recent speech. I quote from the article's translation. Putin speaking. The advocates of so-called social progress believe they are introducing humanity to some kind of a new and better consciousness. The only thing that I want to say now is that their prescriptions are not new at all. It may come as a surprise to some people, but Russia has been there already. 
After the 1917 revolution, the Bolsheviks, relying on the dogmas of Marx and Engels, also said that they would change existing ways and customs, and not just political and economic ones, but the very notion of human morality and the foundations of a healthy society. But Russia has been there already. The destruction of age-old values, religion, and relations between people, up to and including the total rejection, total rejection, total rejection of family, encouragement to inform on loved ones. All this was proclaimed progress, and by the way, was widely supported around the world back then, and was quite fashionable, same as today. By the way, the Bolsheviks were absolutely intolerant of opinions other than theirs. Putin continues, this, I believe, should call to mind some of what we are witnessing now. Looking at what is happening in a number of Western countries, need I point out that this is insane? The fight for equality and against discrimination has turned into aggressive dogmatism bordering on absurdity when the works of the great authors of the past, such as Shakespeare, are no longer taught at schools or universities because their ideas are believed to be backward. The classics are declared backward ignorant of the importance of gender and race. In Hollywood, memos are distributed about proper storytelling and how many characters of what color or gender should be in a movie. This is even worse than the agitprop department of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. This is even worse than the agitprop department of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. This from the head of the former totalitarian enterprise, against whom we fought a five decades long Cold War, risking the entire planet in a very real manner. This from the head of a country riven in a literally genocidal manner by ideas that Putin himself attributes to the progressives in the West, to the generally accepting audience of his once burned, once, twice shy listeners. And all of you, going along with the die activists, whatever your reasons. This is on you. Professors, cowering cravenly in pretense and silence, teaching your students to dissimulate and lie, to get along as the walls crumble for shame. CEOs signaling a virtue you don't possess and shouldn't want to, to please a minority who literally live by displeasure. Your evil capitalists, after all, should be proud of it. At the moment, I can't tell if you're more reprehensibly timid even than the professors. Musicians, artists, writers, stop bending your sacred and meritorious art to the demands of the propagandists before you fatally betray the spirit of your own intuition. Stop censoring your thought. Stop censoring your thought. Stop censoring your thought.